Welcome to the show. Good to have you with us here another week. We'll be talking about some issues maybe in the community this week, but also later in the show, I'll have with me a guest, our Scat Scatter Day, race director for the Ogden Half Marathon Race. It's a longstanding tradition here in the Wheeling area, the 41st year for it. He's also the coordinating producer for the events that take place down at the Wheeling Waterfront all summer long. So he'll be with us a little later on the show, but first I want to start with an, a community issue. And it's something that I've been noticing. Last weekend I was in Baltimore. Uh, my daughter's basketball team, that I'll talk about a little later in the show, traveled out there for a tournament and was in some really nice areas of Baltimore. And as I go around different parts of the country, one thing that I don't see that I see here in town are signs all over the place. You know, if you drive pretty much anywhere here in town, you'll see signs for houses for sale on every corner, house for sale this way, house for sale this way, signs up on telephone poles, garage sale, yard sale, this sale, this thing, you know, wedding shower this way, whatever it may be. I think we have a responsibility and an obligation as a community to make sure that we maintain and try to achieve beautification here in our community. It's important for drawing people into the area. It's important when business people come in from outside the area to think about whether they may want to locate their business here. And too often times we're kind of junking up the place by having these signs all over the place. It's one thing if you need to have someone to know where to turn for a wedding shower to maybe put the sign up, but then when the event's over, go take it back down. And these signs for houses for sale, I have no problem with the signs in the yard of the house that's for sale, but these directional signs all over the place, house for sale down this street, house for sale down this street, you really don't see that a lot in other places. And I think it does detract from the overall beauty of our area. And one of the things that West Virginia really has going for it is it's a beautiful state. You look at our scenery, it's very much unlike many other places. But we've got to do some things, too, to try to make it continue to look beautiful. And I think that having the signs all over the place is just not the ideal way to do it. When I travel other places, you just really don't see that. So I hope we can do something about that and uh, maybe uh, work a little bit on uh, keeping things a little nicer, neater for everybody that that's lives here and for those that are, that are coming in to see what a great place it is to live and raise a family because it is very much that. Next, quote of the week. Now last week I gave a radio uh, or music quote because my guest was Kelly Tucker Jones from Live Nation, so I went with something musical. This week I want to do something also that's a little bit uh, appropriate for our guest in some ways, but also just because it's one of my favorite things, and that's Run, Forest, Run. Of course from Forrest Gump, you know, Forrest Ran, you know. Uh, and you know, this week's Ogden uh, race is a, is a great uh, event for the community. We'll be talking about that with uh, Scott Scatterday later on. But I also bring it up because so many of the, the great quotes and lines and things we think of come from the movies. And, you know, no matter what part of my life I'm going to be in, I can always, always pull a movie quote that pertains to it. And uh, sometimes there's certain friends I enjoy sharing those different quotes from, and they may know those lines as well. Of course, one of my favorite all-time movies, being a lawyer, is My Cousin Vinny. There's so many great lines in that movie, but I like sports movies a lot. A lot of great lines there from different sporting events when I'm there. I'll think of a line that may pertain. So, you know, movies are a great way also to, to get quotes and to make, when things in our own life come up to maybe uh, be able to laugh a little bit, sometimes even cry a little bit. But those movie lines are always great. So Run, Forest Run is one this week from uh, Forrest Gump, of course, a great role. Uh, portrayed by Tom Hanks, uh, a tremendous a actor who's won uh, Academy Awards and, and did a great job with that role. Next up, a legal tip this week, and that is that something that I actually ran into recently is that you don't have to sign arbitration agreements when they're presented to you. You can at least ask, do I have to sign this? Whether you're buying a house, buying a car, a lot of times there's a lot of different documents put in front of you and sometimes there's arbitration agreements put in front of you. Arbitration agreements typically say that if there's a dispute between you and whoever you may be purchasing something from or whoever you're entering into a deal with, that instead of going to court, you will go to arbitration. And that basically means you're giving up your right to a trial by jury. Something that the Seventh Amendment to the United States Constitution gives you is the right to a trial by jury, but by signing an arbitration agreement, you could be waiving that right to a trial by jury, a jury of your peers. And why does this matter, you may ask? Well, it matters because in a courtroom, in many instances, the playing field is level. You've got a lawyer, they've got a lawyer, you're both, you've got to, you're going to be judged by a jury of your peers, which is hopefully just members from all walks of the community, and they're going to decide what's just, what's fair, what's right, what's wrong. If you go into arbitration, oftentimes these arbitration panels are, it's certainly not a jury, and what it is are arbitrators who are typically people that have practiced or worked in the very field in which you are arbitrating the matter. For example, if you're in an arbitration involving uh, the financial world. It's probably going to be made up of arbitrators of stockbrokers. Now you may be saying that a stockbroker did something wrong to you. 
you know, the stockbrokers, unfortunately, too often will protect the stockbroker and not look at how would the average citizen have been thinking, have been acting, and what would they have expected in this situation. They're more used to being in the stockbroker's shoes. So you're giving up your right to be judged by a jury of your peers and instead are in these venues where it's not so favorable perhaps to the average citizen. There are some arbitration clauses that you, or agreements you may have to sign or they won't do the deal with you. And you may have to decide, okay, I want to go ahead with this deal, so I'm going to sign it. There may be others where you, you say, do I have to sign this? And they say, no, you don't have to. And I ran into that situation recently when I was making a purchase. I said, do I have to sign this? They said, no, you don't. I said, well, I'd rather not then. So ask, do I have to sign this? Because it's important, the, the right to a trial by jury is one of the most important rights we have. It, it's the thing that allows your average everyday citizen to be on the same equal footing as a giant corporation when you walk into a courtroom and you're judged by a jury. So really be mindful of that and decide whether or not you want to sign that arbitration agreement and ask whether you have to. We need to take a break. When I come back, I'll have my guests with me this week. Our Scott Scatterday, director of the Ogden Race and also events coordinator down at the waterfront. Stay with us here on the Jamie Bordas Show. Don't forget to do your homework. All right, Mom. Trick or treat. Here you go. Happy Halloween. For your home, for your life, for more than 50 years, De Noon Lumber. Disasters happen. We take care of them all, from cleanup to reconstruction. Tell your insurance provider you prefer Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration, the official restoration company of the Mountaineers. Welcome back to the show. This is one of my favorite times each week when I have a guest with me, and this week's guest is R. Scat Scatterday, the race director of the Ogden Half Marathon and also coordinating producer of the events at the Wheeling Waterfront. And Scott, thanks for being here on the show today. Thank you, Jane. You've been, a, you've been affiliated with this race for a long time now. I have been, yes. This is the 41st year, and uh, the thing that is kind of interesting, um, I didn't realize, but I've done this every year for 40 years, and this is 41st. And the question I would ask anybody in the audience uh, familiar with the race and so forth, what were you doing 40 years ago? Because there's nine guys that are known as Ironmen, and they have run the race all 40 years and now are up for their 41st year. Amazing, amazing feat. And to plow on top of that, Jamie, these nine guys, I had 15, but down to nine, is they are all ready. Each one of them is looking at the next 10 years because they want to do the 50th year. It's really amazing that they're able to, to do that many. You know, I was two when, when, when the race started, 1977, two years old. I'm 42 now. I was just learning to run. Uh, I'm trying to set the record for never running the race, one of them, as many years as possible. That, actually, I, I, it's something that I really always thought growing up. I'd love to run the race. I used to sit on the wall at our office on National Road, watch the runners go by and when I was a kid. And I thought, I'd like to run this race someday. And uh, unfortunately, when I was in college, I had a pretty bad knee injury and was never in a position to be able to do it. My knee's just not good enough. But uh, you know, to see those guys do that year after year after year, uh, is, is really amazing and, and the race has changed since they first ran it. I mean it's a, uh, in, a in a lot of ways and it, it's become a much bigger event too with other events for all age groups really. Well that's the point. When I took over 10 years ago, I, well I'm part of it all the time but as director, uh, it used to be a foot race on Saturday morning. An hour, two hours and it's all done. I decided that this has got to be more of a family event. If we put some more things in there, we'll get to touch the family with interest. So what we now have, I had originally nine races from that one, and now I'm down to six more, or down to six uh, totally. And the reason is I took out the veterans races and stuff because for the last three years, I couldn't get veterans to attend. They either were dying or too old 
to do that. So what I've done now is removed anything that we used to do on Friday to Saturday. And so now the way Saturday works out is that we have at 7.30 on Saturday morning the half marathon walk. At 8 o'clock I have the half marathon run, including the relays. At 8.15 I have the 5K run and walk. And then at 8.20, this is new, moved it from Friday night, the fun run is one mile through the streets of Wheeling, starting at the start-finish line and ending up on Water Street. And then at 9 o'clock, we have the Tiny Tot Trot, the last 100 yards on Water Street. And those kids are just so, so precious and so excited to get in this race. And we give them all the bib number one. Yeah, they enjoy that. I know I, I, my kids have done that in the past. I, uh, my daughter's actually run the, the 5K, which is, which is uh, cool, but um, won't be able to, they won't be able to do it this year too many softball and baseball games that day, unfortunately. Uh -huh. but, yeah. uh, but, you know, it, I think it has really expanded to include families. And you do see, you know, people with their kids down there. You see kids with the bib numbers, as you alluded to. You see the adults running. You see grandparents that are still running it. Uh, and sometimes you see multiple generations that are all participating in the event, which makes it really special. And I always say part of what makes the Wheeling area a great place to live, to raise a family. And, uh, you know, one of the big types of reasons that I came back here after I got done with school is because of things like this. Yes. Well, we have experienced uh, people now in the later years in their 80s doing the, doing the marathon. And that's just amazing. Uh, but we have the very young as well. Uh, the way the numbers are looking at this point, uh, last year we had 1,089 total runners on all the races. We are now 22% below where we were last year. But uh, come Friday, a lot of runners wait to see what the weather's going to be on Saturday and uh, then they sign up. So we can get as many as 200 plus runners, which will get us right up pretty much even with last year's totals. Yeah, it looks like it's not gonna be too hot on Saturday. So, uh, you know, we should have decent weather for it. It looks like maybe, some, you know, rain looks like it'll probably hold off, but you never know. But uh, I think what people really look for is to avoid that really those super hot conditions. And I think it should be okay this year. Yeah, wh what I've done different this year, and again, has uh, been prodded by uh, Jim Comercy, is we're gonna meet with Dr. Walker of Channel 7 and do a weather medical evaluation. In other words, even though the weather report is supposed to be 76 uh, and on Saturday, when they're running, that's like in the afternoon, in the morning it's 62. So that has a different effect and therefore as a runner you have to adjust to that thing. So depending on what Dr. Walker wants to tell us about the forecast for Saturday, then Jim Comercy will uh, present uh, some medical advice to all the runners. And that's the first time we've ever done something like that. You got you know, a lot of medical attention this year between Dr. Comercy and his team, and then also Mountain River Physical Therapy on board this year as well that's gonna be providing some support in the medical arena as well. Absolutely, I'm glad you mentioned that. Uh, Mountain River Physical Therapy is new in town slightly and they are interested in being more than just a company. They're here to live here and to give to the So they've given us support in finances as well as I've set up a 300, 30 by 70 tent uh, on the finish line for just their ability to t treat all the runners that need therapy. And then part of that uh, well, Jim is bringing uh, four doctors, uh, so if we get a triage that's serious enough, then we can always call on Larry Helms and, and the paramedics to the fire department to run these various uh, hurting runners to the hospital. So we're totally covered like we've never been before. And of course, Mountain River Physical Therapy with the pretty new location out the YMCA in Elm Grove and uh, the Y, the beneficiary of this year's race proceeds just as it was last year, which I very much appreciate. I'm president of the board at the YMCA and I really appreciate uh, that the Y is getting that because it helps with so many 
uh, uh, services being provided to those that maybe couldn't otherwise afford to come to the Y, uh, things like summer camp and, and uh, also kids just being involved in programs. So it, it's, it's really great that the Y is uh, the beneficiary of the proceeds. Uh, thank you for mentioning that. Actually, this is the first time we've ever given uh, to the same uh, agency the proceeds of the race and afterwards. And the real reason why it is, and you may have mentioned it, the YMCA in Elm Grove does not turn away anyone. So they do an unbelievable amount of reaching out and making the community a better community. Um, and so we were happy to do that again. And we could be talking somewhere between fifteen and $20,000 if things work out right. But thank you, YMCA, for what it is you do do. It's our privilege to help you with that in a little way. Well, Adam Shinsky and the team out there, he's the executive director, do a great job, you know, with everything they do at the Y. You know, people like me who are board members, we come in and we, you know, meet a few times a year and give a little bit of direction, but they do a fantastic job on a daily basis of making sure the needs of kids and families are met here in the local area. And it comes back to what I said, makes it part of what makes this area a really good place to live and raise a family are things like the YMCA. So. That's right. Now, just one other thing that fits in with making this a better effect on the community is uh, this year our assignments are uh, I've got 260 some from West Virginia I've got another 20, 226 signed up from Ohio and 98 signed up from Pennsylvania so basically and, and then then just to expound as I looked at the attendance we have people that's come from all over the United States Washington, Oregon, California, Texas, Arizona, Florida, the Midwest, the Wisconsin, a tremendous display of participants that recognize the challenge of this race and show up. Now, last year, we even had a couple from Europe. That hasn't happened yet, but we've still got a, well, we're looking at 200 places on Friday that we don't normally get. It's great when you can have that kind of, kind of reach, no doubt. Uh, we need to take a break here. When we come back, I'll continue talking with Scott Scatterday a little bit about things that are going on down at the riverfront this summer. Stay with us here on the Jamie Bordas Show. Welcome back to the show. I've been speaking with my guest this week, our Scat Scatterday, who is the race director for the Ogden Half Marathon, but also wears another hat, and that is as the coordinating producer of the events at the Wheeling Heritage Port and the waterfront there. And you've got this event guide here with you, Scat, that's the 2017 Ohio Valley Summer Event Guide uh, presented by Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration, who built my set, by the way, which did a great job on that, but uh, it was designed by Wheelhouse Creative. And this has events all the way from Toronto in the north down to Moundsville in the south that people can pick up at various places throughout the valley here. You, you put How many of these out did you put out there? Well, I had Bobby Contragero Sr., an excellent uh, citizen that I work with. He bought 50,000 of these. So we put those out to all those venues down at the waterfront and so forth. And so what I did uh, was to get the list of, of uh, songs and artists and so forth, put them together in a, in a in a bulletin, and then they they then they went ahead and produced this thing. Now, um, the thing that's interesting that I wanted to point out is while the races are happening on Saturday, this whole weekend is a 
full weekend because there's more things for the family. Say, for instance, there are five concerts, Friday night, Saturday morning, Saturday night, Sunday night, and Monday night, and all of the best groups. Then we got three bike tours on Sunday morning. We've got a memorial service on, on Monday morning. Plus there's plenty of time for picnics, family gatherings, and graduations. And you can find with this uh, a place for something to do for everybody. So it's just not a runner athletic thing. It's a family. Somebody can find something to do no matter where they are in the family. I think it's great too because you've got people that are from the local area that can enjoy this. You've got people that are staying up at Ogilvy that can come down and partake in these types of things. So it really makes for a great Memorial Day weekend experience for people in the valley and also people that are coming in to visit the valley. That's right. And uh, wheeling is something, this is one to do one of your quotes. I'll add to it, I don't, maybe you want to use it or not. But I always say to, when I get a chance to people, come to wheeling, find Mayberry. And the point is, if you know about that show, the people on that show were decent, honest, caring, watching out for it. And that's what the people are in Wheeling. There's, there's very little difference. And so I uh, get them to thinking like that. And so when we, when we put stuff like this for the whole summer, or we just do the race as part of the summer, we offer uh, alternatives to families to make Wheeling, West Virginia, an outstanding, more than normal place to be. Well, thank you for being here. Thanks for all you do for the city. I know everybody appreciates it. Thank you, Jamie. We need to take a break. When I come back, we'll be talking a little bit of sports. Stay with us here on the Jamie Bordas Show. We've obtained the record results in almost every field of law. And other attorneys can't say we've had the largest verdict in this field. We can. We've done these things. We've tried these cases. We've gotten the big results. We've gotten the big verdicts. That sets us apart. I think that says something to insurance companies. It says something to corporations that this is a firm to be reckoned with. It's not the size of the verdict that's so important. It's the change that we hope to bring about. Bordas and Bordas, fighting for justice. Welcome back to the show. It's time to talk sports. I'm actually going to start with, an, with the NFL, which is a strange thing to start with in May, but the NFL owners met recently and decided to make some rules changes that I think everybody needs to know a little bit about. The first is on celebration. Players will now be able to celebrate after touchdowns in groups. They'll be able to use props. They'll be able to do a whole host of things, unlike they've been able to do in the past. So you'll maybe see the fines come down. You'll see uh, a little bit of change in the celebrations. You know, the NFL sometimes has been jokingly called the, the no fun league, you know, instead of the National Football League. But uh, the owners have decided to let them have a little bit of fun after a touchdown and let them do some things. There will be a clock after the touchdown score, though, 40 seconds to snap the ball on the extra point, uh, or there'll be a penalty. And they'll still be subject to some things that you just are out of bounds, you know, things that are uh, inappropriate, things of that nature. And that'll be a little bit of a judgment call. But uh, they will be able to, again, celebrate in groups and use props and things like that. So some changes there. Also changes to the overtime rules. Instead of 15-minute overtime periods, it will now be 10 minutes. If after the 10-minute over period in the overtime period in the regular season, it's still a tie. The game ends in a tie. So we may see another tie or two during the course of the regular season, but they're going from 15 minutes to 10. My daughter asked me this morning on the way to school, have they gotten rid of that crazy rule where if a team scores a touchdown first, it's over, and the other team doesn't get a chance? No, they have not gotten rid of that. Despite the Patriots winning the Super Bowl this year without the Atlanta Falcons getting a chance to score themselves, that rule remains in place. If a touchdown is scored on the first possession, that team wins. So, you know, that hasn't gone by the wayside, but some other changes there that are worth noting. 
Another change, the Super Bowl has been awarded to Tampa in 2021. It was supposed to be in L.A., but it looks like the stadiums in L.A. may not be ready in time to or have enough time uh, where they've been in, in, uh, in use to be able to host the games in 2021. So instead, they'll bump them to 2022, and Tampa will get the 2021 Super Bowl. Speaking of the California area, the Golden State Warriors, 12-0 to start this year's NBA playoffs. Remember, they were my pick on this show to win the title this year. I said they'd beat Cleveland in six games. I still think I'll stick with that. But, uh, you know, off to a 12-0 start in the playoffs, which has never done, been done before. So they're rolling at the right time. Uh, we'll see if their coach comes back. Steve Kerr had been out for most of the playoffs, uh, still suffering from the effects of a back surgery a couple years ago and some spinal fluid leak that he's had, producing terrible migraines, etc. But Mike Brown been doing a great job as the coach of that team in his absence, and uh, I'll still stick with the, uh, the Warriors to win it all. And speaking of basketball, uh, my daughter Alexis's West Virginia elite fourth grade basketball team competed this last weekend in Baltimore in the Mid-Atlantic Girls Invitational Championships and won. Went undefeated there, beating teams from Virginia, Maryland, Pennsylvania. And when you can go out and beat teams in the you know, greater D.C., Baltimore area, beating teams from Philadelphia, you're doing something pretty well. So uh, I want to just mention her on this show. Congratulations to her and all of her teammates. My wife Stacy is the coach of that team, and they've been really rolling throughout the year and uh, a lot of fun. And, you know, again, it's another thing that makes our state look good when teams can go out and do that. You know, they're called West Virginia Elite, and you hear people at the stands saying, oh, this team from West Virginia, they're really looking good. And uh, it it's kind of puts a smile on your face to hear that when you, when you grew up here and you've lived here your entire life, to hear somebody talking positively about what the team from West Virginia is doing, uh, that's a great thing. But... Um, you know, speaking of youth sports, you know, there, there are a lot of things going on in, in the local area. But one of the things I want to mention is, you know, I mentioned talked last week about Little League Baseball and softball. But I should mention uh, soccer as well because the Wheeling Amateur Soccer Association just does a fantastic job with, with their events. Uh, I didn't grow up really as a soccer guy. I was more of a football guy. But, the, you know, my kids, the first sport that all of them have played has been kitty kick. And to see the kids with the smiles on their faces and they look forward to it each week and they're laughing and joking around. And you know, even at the kitty kick level, they don't even keep score. But th those kids get excited when they have a goal. They get excited to get the snack after the game. And it gets more serious after that. And my kids, most of them have ventured away from soccer and into other sports as they get a little bit older. But it's the first sport for so many kids in this area. And they do a great job. So I just want to commend the folks there that run that organization and do a fantastic job with it. We are running out of time here this week. I hope you enjoy your Memorial Day weekend. I hope you have a great Memorial Day. Remember all those that are to be remembered on Memorial Day. And we will see you again next week on the JV Board.